This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations, everybody! Artie and Marty are continuing with Turnabout Reminiscence. We've been on this one for a while. And yep, part and one. one part one! What did I tell you? <sighs> okay. September Detective 10th, 5.45 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. Detective Bad, hanging That's, out behind a bush. And, and looks like we've got, like, a painting of Francis Schaefer on the wall there. What? <laughs> Francis Schaefer? He is a theologian. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... Mm, mm, mm. What, what is this incredibly overpowering sweet scent? It smells like flowers. Uncle Bad! Is this it? Hmm? Isn't that Detective Bad and K over there? It looks like- Oh, uh, never mind, wrong voice. It looks like she managed to escape the bailiff. No, that's not quite it. Aww, it's too bad. But it's so pretty! I think you're still a bit too young to be wearing that. But since you found it, I guess I can let you keep it. Thanks! I'll treasure it always! Those two seem to get along rather well. I swear, if he's actually her uncle. Oh, here. I've got something else for you. It's a real pistol. Yay! Thank you, Uncle Bad. Earlier, I ate one of these with gummy. Gummy? Oh, you mean gumshoe. Gummy is... <laughs> he was trying to be nice to me because I was going to get in trouble. And then he got in trouble because he lied to protect me. Gummy... <laughs> I know he didn't kill Daddy! Don't cry. She's just shoving that down. <laughs> Faraday would be sad if he saw you crying. Uh, I'm not crying! Okay. Oh! It's the mister from before and the lady too! Don't you think it would be a good idea to go home for the time being? You're not involved in the investigation, so it's for the best if you do. Um... Actually, I'm Uncle Bad's assistant, so I'm related to the investigation! Is that so, Detective Bad? Yeah, I guess. What?! You were just scolding us like kids to not mess up the crime scene! And now you let this child run free?! Why?! People are free to investigate things outside of the actual crime scene. You also had a few things she wanted to look into. Got a problem with that? <sighs> I don't have a problem with that, but I am curious as to what Miss Yu is looking into. Uncle Bad, I'm gonna go have a look somewhere else, okay? Alright, I'm counting on you. No, no supervision! Just let this little girl oh, run around a courthouse when there's probably a killer on the loose. Oh, that's right! Hey, mister! Hmm? Yes, was it, what is it? I know Gummy really isn't the bad guy. I mean it. So, please... Find the real bad guy, okay? I won't forgive whoever did this. But in the absence of the perfect piece of testimony and evidence, there is no one else who could be the true culprit other than Detective Gumshoe. Hmm? She wandered off while I was pondering. Goodbye. So soon. <laughs> yes, what is it? What is this smell that has permeated the air? Permeated. Permeated. Hmm. It's sweet and flowery. Although at this strength, I'm likely to, likely to suffocate from it. I can't conduct an investigation under these circumstances. We need to open a window and air this room out. I demand that you open a window right now. Hurry. Francisca, one of the windows is already open. I can see that. Hmm. I wonder. Is it just a coincidence that one of the windows in this room is already open too? I don't think it was earlier. This is a different room than we invested. Oh, this that's isn't true. the crime scene. <laughs> that expensive painting is ill suited to be hanging on the wall of this room. I wonder if a guard detail should be placed on it. Why do you say that? Oh no no no! Oh, you know who that is in the photo? Not actually. Sio Bibble from episode one. <laughs> the death toll was catastrophic! You must contact me! <laughs> oh, the one that kept phrasing in and out? <laughs> He's got the beard. Even, I don't even remember what that dude looks like. He's got the beard. From episode one? Yes. How do you remember 
Oh, he's got the same beard. How do you remember this guy's name in the first place? I don't remember. Oh, my oh you know how the Star Wars cookbook. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, there was a cookbook? Th there was a There's a cookbook just for episode one. It's weird. What What was the recipe then for him? <laughs> it's like a beverage called Bibble Bubble. Oh, <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> or it's like the screenshot was like basically a glass of like the beverage with his face in it. Like Ugh. like his holographic face in it. Oh, it's like a blue beverage. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, that's the tip. That's the piece of information of you day. didn't want to hear. Get, get the Star Wars cookbook. <laughs> well, a desperate low paid detective might make it off with it someday. You never know. She may be thinking about hiring a guard. But it's obvious she isn't factoring in that guard's salary whatsoever. One of the windows in this lobby is open as well. The air conditioner is working just fine in this room, so why did they open it, I wonder? Ooh, logic added? No? No logic at all. We're behaving very logically right now. Okay. This decorative plant leaves- <laughs> This decorative plant's leaves are shinier than the ones on the plant in lobby number two. That's probably because it's next to the windows, where it's easier to photosynthesize. You may be right. Plus, the curtains are always drawn in lobby number two. The caretakers of this courthouse don't think enough about the plants, do they? That's because they're the courthouse's caretakers, not a bunch of botanists. What an incredibly strong-scented herbal tea. I fear that more than being relaxing, this scent may be make one a bit heady instead. You put in a special request for that. No wonder she's so violent if she's been drinking this stuff the whole time. Neither woman should be allowed to comment on this particular topic. Ever. What? Okay. They're both violent. Oh, right. Is this the same thing? It may not look like much, but I find that ordinary tables like this one are very useful. <laughs> Allow me to stick my finger up your nose, Francisca. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's about time they bought a new one. I wonder if they will replace this table if I hit it enough with my whip. A much too heavy-handed method if I now ever saw like one. Now it looks like she's breathing in his ear. Edgeworth, I want to come tell you something. <laughs> I can see down into the courthouse courtyard from here. What is that mess supposed to be? It's like an optical illusion. I believe it's supposed to be postmodern in design. Oh, well, no wonder it's terrible. Postmodernism is awful. <laughs> More like the thoughtlessness in design. I can't disagree there. <laughs> this television is the same model as the one in Defendant Lobby No. 2. I want to watch the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Disney Plus has that, you know. <laughs> yeah, the newest thing probably from our previous recordings is uh, Disney Plus is out. But of course, by the time this is uh, out on YouTube, Disney Plus will probably have been a thing for three years. <laughs> yeah, let's be fair. Two or three years. Looks like the two rooms are basically the same in terms of layout and supplies. Yes. Hmm, the two rooms are basically the same, huh? If they're basically the same, then why is the door open? Or not the door, the window. Detective Bad, what exactly was Kay searching for? I think the window was open in the other one as well. I don't think so. Nothing that concerns you, boy. Oh, and I suppose it has something to do with Kay. It does because she's Faraday's daughter. Anyway, hurry up and get to the point. I don't have time to waste. He has bullet holes in his tie. How did that not, like, kill him? Unless it's like he set his tie on the ground and purposefully <laughs> shot it. I bet I'd look cool if I had bullet holes in my tie. Or maybe he, like, <laughs> left... You know how, like, when I left a bear on a lamp and then yes. it um, set on fire? <laughs> That's a different story. But maybe, like, that same idea of, like, he put a tie on something then there was a hole in it from mm -hmm. the burn of the fabric. He was like, I know what I'm gonna do. Strikes a match to his tie, burns a hole, blows it out. <laughs> Sounds like he'd rather be left alone here. Actually, he just took, like, one of those... What do you call them? Like, the hole punchers. And <laughs> just punch them. That doesn't work for fabric! <laughs> Sounds like you'd rather be left alone. I have something I'd like to confirm with you once again. I don't have anything to say to you. Humph. Be that as it may, we still have questions that we need answers to. Now then, first of all, what is the overpowering smell that is permeating this room? Upon entering this room, I thought I was going to suffocate. It's that ultra strong perfume you wear. She spilled some of it. Oh no! <laughs> I don't like perfume. <laughs> like at all. It's it's 
Perfume is to women what cologne is to guys, I think. But, but girls like guys' cologne. Not all girls. Well, a lot of girls do. I don't know. I was having a bad time of it myself. I didn't think twice and opened the window. That smell's still here. Perfume, huh? So the sweet scent in this air is perfume. Well, it's giving out quite a stench. I bet it's some cheap no-name brand. She said it's a famous brand from overseas. <laughs> It's a knockoff. Yes, definitely a knockoff. No disrespect, but she forced one of those bottles on me. Here, little girl, you can have it. Hm. I was born for a much more expensive and refined perfume. For Carmen buys only the best perfume. <laughs> However, seeing as you have just happen to have a spare, I suppose I'll take it. Miles Edgeworth, you will hold on to this bottle without fail. Cause she doesn't have pockets. Ah. Why can't she ever be honest about her wants? Because she's Miss a Sundere. I want to know what it smells like. Now that we have the perfume, now we have the perfume Miss U wears. Just fantastic. Miss U use perfume? Uh, same perfume. I think it smells flowery and sickeningly sweet. Maybe it smells like jasmine. I hate the smell of jasmine. Aladdin, how dare you? No, not, not like, uh... I bet jasmine wears jasmine perfume. Probably. Well, and like... Anytime I've walked into those, like, soap stores or whatever, like, Bath, bath and Body Works, or yeah. Bath Bombs, like, Lush, it's like, here's, like, the scent of this. I'm like, mmm, lovely. It's like lemongrass, mmm. Then you pick up a jasmine one, I'm like, ugh, it's too much. <laughs> like, every time. It's like when you get those, like, Yankee candle scented candles, and it's like, vanilla birthday cake. It's like, I almost pass out. Like, yeah, oh. no, literally. That thing is so nuts. Mm, is that all you wanted to talk about? Bacon scented candles. If so, I'm <laughs> going back to investigate it. <laughs> Actually, I still have a few other things I wish to inquire about, like Brian Mac and Cheese. Did you know he has more subscribers now? <laughs> yes, he does. So, you were in this room the entire recess? Like I said, I made a call to the precinct to get that big lug down here. But other than that, I was waiting for the recess to end in here. At least your story is consistent. Earlier, you stated that you were in the lobby with Miss Yu. Yeah, I ran into her in the hallway. She said she wanted to talk to me about something, so we came in here. Then, what were you saying is that until Detective Gumshoe's arrival, you and Miss Yu were in two different locations? Hmm, guess I am. Interesting. Speaking of that lawyer, she seems to have a great dislike for you. <sighs> Let's see, Miss Yu is the sister of the victim of the KG-8 incident. And as I recall, Detective Bad was the lead detective on that case. I wonder if the reason for her disdain isn't simply because you failed to guard CC, but because you were the lead detective on the Here's case. Here's the thing, normally I would say I would never remember who the lead detective on a stupid case would be, but if it, he looked exactly the same now as he did then, <laughs> yeah. you'd be like, man, remember that weird detective with the bullet holes in And everything? the cigarette in his mouth all the time. Yeah, it's like that chef that were, was at my workplace who would just have the cigarette hanging in her mouth. She wouldn't smoke! In the building. I just like to suck the nicotine out of it. She just likes to suck the nicotine out of it. <laughs> you knew. Hm. I also know that today's trial involving the Kodopian Embassy staff member is being referred to as the second KG-8 incident. Now then, Detective, I believe it's time you were honest with me and told me the truth behind your relationship with Miss Yu and Mr. Faraday and the KG-8 incident. You already know that much. I guess it'd be alright to tell you. Now then, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the KG-8 incident. It's not exactly a happy story. Other than the people who were directly involved, you two will be the first to hear what I'm about to say. The honest truth behind the KG-8 incident. I love lollipops. <laughs> Is that a lollipop? Yep. <laughs> what flavor is that? It's like... Butterscotch? Orange? Is that an orange Tootsie Pop? <laughs> what color are you seeing, sir? Oh, that? Oh, I'm looking at the bigger screen. It looks more red to me. Yeah, on that screen it does look red. Oh, and we get the satin music now. 
Faraday, you and I. Best buds. As you already know, we three were involved with the KG-8 incident. Faraday and I, we were originally on the trail of the smuggling ring. You mean the smuggling case involving one of the Amano Group's secretaries? <laughs> that try was just a front. A facade? Yeah. But the case became tainted. All because the witness who was going to testify about the Amano Group's ties to the smuggling ring CCU was killed. Then what became of the secretary who was arrested? Bro, if we had Maya Faye right now? His name was Colin Devore. To be honest, the guy didn't know a thing about the smuggling ring. We remember him. He died in the third case. Oh, yeah. But he confessed to knowing about it anyway. Devore was probably being intimidated by the big boss man. Just another scapegoat. <laughs> the boss man of the Amano group? He can't seriously mean Mr. Ernest Amano. That doofus was such a wimp. <laughs> he had to. He just happened to have a million dollars on hand and is like, I'll buy the haunted house. I'll buy it. It's fine. <laughs> well, that hasn't, no, that hasn't no, happened yet. No. <laughs> that can't be right. It's probably just Detective Bad's personal hypothesis. What is he trying to do? Suspecting Mr. Amano of being involved with smuggling. Oh, that's because Mr. Amano and Manfred Von Karma are best buds. He always went to Von Karma's holiday party. <laughs> Ah, oh, Ernest, you're the you're the guest of honor. <laughs> I suppose it would have been quite difficult to secure an acquittal after he confessed. But the man who killed CCU, Manny Cochin, was a completely different person. But since he's already been acquitted once of her murder, Mr. Faraday, how could you have let him go? If I remember correctly, I heard that Mr. Faraday had an important piece of evidence stolen from him. Just like Von Karma stole from us. That wasn't Faraday's fault. It was mine. I wasn't vigilant enough. Faraday, Cece, I was supposed to protect them both. Miss Yu did mention that as well, about how Detective Bad was supposed to guard her sister. But even I, who was supposed to protect them, I fell into their trap. What kind of trap? <laughs> the holes in this jacket are a testament to that trap. You mean, you were fired upon? You were shot at that many times in one gunfight? No. Only about half of these are from that case. But the reason I continue to wear this jacket is to remind myself of the lessons I learned from the KG-8 incident. Only half of them? I see. I couldn't protect CCU. The suspect was found not guilty. We had hit a brick wall, as far as the law was concerned. And that's when she came into the courtroom, the victim's sister. That's when I first met, first met Callisto Yu. I kind of, I really like Detective Bad, actually, because he's, like, the super, like, cool, badass, intimidating police detective, but he also, like, sucks on lollipops, has like, the pink mirror. Yeah. And he seems really good with kids as well. <laughs> he's okay with kids. He just kind of looks he, like, you go He and there. Kay are pretty close. I guess. About when you first met Miss Yu, she's calling him uncle, so. Kay, Kay is close to everybody, though, really. Yeah, that's true. It was on the day of the verdict of the KG-8 incident was handed down, was it not? Yes. Faraday and I, we apologized to her from the bottom of our hearts. It was all we could do, but just saying you're sorry won't bring my sister back, she said. And then she gave me a hard slap across the face. Well, she certainly had a lot of self-control to stop at just a slap. If it was me, not even a hundred lashes would have been punishment enough. I suppose not. You said it herself, that she never wanted to see either of us ever again. But after that, you've seen her many times over, correct? Yeah. Faraday and I, even after the KG-8 incident had come to a close, we continued to hunt down the smuggling ring and got involved in a variety of cases. But it was no use. We cracked so many different cases. But the result was always the same. We couldn't find the real mastermind behind the ring. Is the ring really that big? It was in the pursuit of the ring that we met you once again. It was during another trial 
related to the smuggling ring. Faraday was the prosecutor, and I, as the lead detective, took to the witness stand. You. She appeared out of the blue as the defense attorney. Her, her client was related to the smuggling ring, and she was defending them? Yeah. You was pursuing the ring as best as she could as a lawyer. I think she defended Rel this time, for the same reason. Come to think of it, Miss Yu did say something to the same effect. I pff, have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer? Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. Here's the real question. Where does her hair end and begin? Because, like, in the previous photo, her hair was all the way down to, like, almost her butt. And here, you can only see it down her back. Well, we can't see her butt in this picture, can we? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. But, like, it, she's so skinny, her hair should stick out a little bit to the side. Not if it's, like, the longest ponytail ever. It's not a ponytail, though. I don't know, it could be... It's video game physics. True. The only way I had to... The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him. Ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. Hm. It doesn't matter what her reason is. Helping a criminal is just despicable! You're so naive, little girl. I could have stolen this lollipop from you, that's how naive you are. How dare you insult the daughter of a Von Karma! Just like us, you felt that she had to hit the limit of what the law could do. That's all. The law is merely a tool. There is no limit to it, only the skill of the craftsman. You two are still too young, but one day you'll know what I mean. It's kind of what, uh, reflecting what happened in Rise from the Ashes. Where Lana's yeah. like, we could, the law wasn't powerful enough to get, uh, Joe Dart convicted, so they forged evidence. Yep. But enough sidetracking. What matters is that we met you again in pursuit of the smuggling ring. That's all. So what was your relation to Mr. Faraday? You even seem to know Kay fairly well. I met him. And he was a rookie prosecutor, known him ever since. And Kay, I've known her since the day she was born. Faraday and I, we cracked quite a few cases together. Hmm, but you two seem to have made no progress at all in the Yadagarasu case. That's none of your business. Did we touch a nerve? Hmm, <laughs> I only have one thing to say to you. No one knew more about the Yadagarasu than me and Faraday. That's why I was called upon to testify in today's trial. I wonder how Kay went from, I'm gonna be a hero of justice, to I'm gonna be the Yadagarasu. Right. To prove that Rel was not the real Yadagarasu. Which I would have done if he hadn't turned around and accused Faraday. After the accusation, I was asked to testify, but this time, to prove or disprove the accusation, but I guess I won't be doing that either. I sense that there's more to that statement than meets the eye. Perhaps a bit more digging into the Yadagarasu is what's necessary. <laughs> Do you mind if my finger is this close to your head? You claim to know much more about the Yadagarasu. Would you care to share what you know with me? What you two should be looking for right now is proof of murderous intent towards Faraday and Rill. I thought he was going to say the door. I agree, which is exactly why I'm asking you about the Yadagarasu. What? The KG-8 incident and this second KG-8 incident? Both of these cases are tied to the smuggling ring. And in both of these cases, the witness who was to testify about the ring was murdered. Yeah, those are pretty similar. However, there is only one point in which they differ. And that is the presence or absence of the great thief Yadagarasu. Mr. Rell claimed to be the Yadagarasu, however, in the middle of the trial, he suddenly declared Mr. Faraday to be the real Yadagarasu. Then, during the recess, they were both killed. Don't you find that to be the least bit odd? Miles Edgeworth, stop beating around the bush and just 
spit it out already! I believe that there must be some reason that the two men suspected of being the Adagarasu were both killed at the same time. The reason. Huh. And so, in order to catch Mr. Farday and Mr. Rell's cold-blooded killer, I feel the need to learn as much as I can about the Yadagarasu. Bro, what if Kay killed them? And she was the great thief Yadagarasu. <laughs> She's <laughs> like eight! She's just like, cold blood murder. <laughs> Although, to be fair, she's not doing that now. If that's the case. That, that would be like if Cody was the murderer in the Steel Sarah. <laughs> 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 Veteran action star killed by grade school <laughs> boys. <laughs> you know what, though? That would make a headline like that. If it will help you solve this case... Then I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reason why we've never caught the Yadagarasu. What was that sudden outburst for? You almost made me whip you by accident. No! It still accidentally whipped me anyway. There are three main reasons why the Yadagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, the Yadagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, the Yadagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. Third, the Yadagarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind, ever. Are I you saying that from experience? I see. So those are the Yadagarasu's special traits. Sounds like an incredibly elusive thief. Not like Mask to Mask, who just dumped his costume in a garbage can. <laughs> Nobody would notice. <laughs> or like, um, <laughs> Mr. Um, Underwear Man. Panty Snatcher. Panty Snatcher. What's the stick? Who also <laughs> grabbed underwear out of the trash can. No, he, <laughs> no, he, he threw it he in threw the it trash in can. He did not grab it out. That would have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, underwear. I love underwear. underwear. <laughs> yeah. The Yadagarasu has never been caught on tape, never tries to draw anyone's attention, and would never do something as lowbrow as commit murder. Is that so? That's how I knew that Rel wasn't the real Yadagarasu right away. But you can't use that sort of logic on its own to prove that he wasn't. <laughs> Listen, little girl. I'm not done talking yet. Ugh. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who infiltrated the Kodopian embassy. The Yadagarasu. The Yadagarasu sent the evidence. Until now, the Yadagarasu would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. Not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others, knew about. You? In that case, how can you be so sure it was the Yadagarasu who sent it? That's easy. The special card that only the Yadagarasu uses <gasps> was attached. Does it have a shell on it? That's how I can be so sure. Can and I see? And just what sort of card is it? Here, take a look at this article. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Whenever the Yadagarasu wants to publicize something, a white card is sent along with the stolen oh, wait, information. We've seen, we've seen that card somewhere. Did we see it in this game? We saw it in this game. Did... K give it to us? No. Oh, crap! I don't, it's been so long, I don't I remember. actually don't remember myself, I don't even remember. though I've played this before. No! But, when we questioned Rel about what was sent along with the white oh, wait. card... It was in the airplane case, I think. Where? I think it was in the the storage room with um narcoleptic chick. <laughs> um, uh, Cami Meal. Yeah, Cami Meal. I think it was in there. You know how there was like the cloth was underneath the. the there's box? the Borginian cloth. Yeah, but then I think. With <laughs> yes, that, it's veggies. I think with that, this card was there too. Uh, no, I don't think uh, so. Or otherwise, Basketball Boy. It might have been basketball, basketball boy. It might have been basketball, basketball. boy. <laughs> Rel had no idea what it was. Ah, and that's how Detective Bad knew that Mr. Rel was a phony. Thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of the Yadagarasu now. Hmm. Cool. <gasps> Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> what is with your voice? <laughs> yes? His Honor would like to transfer evidence from today's trial over to you. <laughs> so if you could please head over to the courtroom and be much appreciated, sir. <laughs> Understood. Uh, and, and good luck with overcoming that grovelly fr grovelly fr <laughs> of yours. I'll be right there shortly. Detective Bad, what does the law mean to you? Sorry. 
finding the answer to that question is the only reason I'm still alive. Oh. I became a prosecutor to find the answer to that question myself. And to play a part in showing that all criminals everywhere are found guilty. 